I showed this uh, frame before. This is um, the style is called a foundationless frame. There's no backing plastic in here. The the bees just make a natural uh, comb. And you can see this. This is just beautiful, beautiful comb. Right. Um, I like to go uh, foundationless because if this were a uh, a normal uh, frame with queen cells on it, I could just take a knife and cut out the queen cell and then move it somewhere. Uh, with plastic backing, you can't do that. But anyway, so the workers happen to have drawn out uh, what we call drone comb. So this is um, comb, the, the entire uh, uh, honeycomb is extra uh, large. And I can just tell right away, if you're a beekeeper, you know this drone comb, it just did slightly larger than worker comb. And you can see some of these, uh, the worker or the queen has laid drone eggs in there and you can see them all there. They're um, Th those are larvae. Those are ready. To, uh, they're ready to come out any, any day now. I'm sure those drones will be uh, emerging. The drone comb is bigger because drones are bigger, obviously. Um, I wanted to film this because uh, um, if you're going to raise queens, you need to know they need to mate within about four weeks of coming out. So if you don't have drones on the on the go, you will never have a mated queen, and she won't be able to lay fertilized eggs. So. Um, you never uh, start breeding queens until you you get drones, right? So I've got lots of drones coming out now. And not necessarily will these drones be the ones fertilizing my queen. Uh, probably not, actually. But uh, I know that if, if my queen is, uh, is, is raising drones, um, then other hives will be raising drones. And when my queen comes out in about a week, uh, she'll be able to get mated uh, because there'll be lots of, uh, of other drones flying around. I'm filming this from below because I wanted to see, in addition to the that one queen cell, which is there, is the one on the bottom, does it have a queen in it or will it? And you can see very clearly the white mass in the middle, that is royal jelly. Let's see if I can focus this. Yeah, so that's definitely um, royal jelly. And what that is doing is, um, um, it's, 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 a, it's an egg in there, queen egg and the, the workers flood the queen cell with royal jelly, you know, super high protein, super nutritious, uh, and the egg converts into a larva that then expresses queen genes. There's two gene sets inside of every worker egg, or sorry, of every female egg, either a worker or a queen. So in this case, the queen genes are coming out. And the workers will keep adding royal jelly in there until uh, that a larva reaches about seven days and the and the bees will then cap cap it over like it is there because the larva will expand and grow all right this is my second go at queen rearing so the first batch for some reason the queens broke down all the cells um, it might have been chilled because I let I let them out in the cold weather I'm gonna go fast now and just blow on these bees to get them off the queens Right, so you can see there, there's a one, two, and then three. Uh, there's a third queen cell right there, and there's two. There's a queen cup down there, so they built that up in anticipation of a queen laying in it. There's another one there, another one there. I don't think that that one on the bottom had a queen in it. Although if it did, there'd be a queen in there, and she'd be killing all those uh, queen cells over there. And I thought I spotted another queen cell somewhere. I don't think so. And there's another one on the back. So I've got one, two, three, four. I've got four queen cells on this frame and I'll see how it goes. All right, my split is uh, coming to near completion. Um, this frame has two queens on it, queen cells. Okay, there they are right there. This started with eight or nine and they, they uh, the bees broke them all down. So. These cells are either viable, or they're queens, or, or they're not, and I don't know what's going to go on. So I'm going to take, I think I'm going to take that queen. I'm just going to use this uh, little um, screwdriver or a wrench thing and pry the queen out. I'll be very, very careful. I won't do it on film. I'm going to, I need two hands, but I'm going to take that off and then pop it onto uh, another frame, which I've got down here. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll hollow out with this again. I'll hollow out a, um, a spot in here in the, on the wax where the queen cell will fit nicely. And then I'll pop that loaded frame into that small nuke right there. 
so this is a big day. Um, right down here, that very large cluster of bees is they're surrounding a queen cell. You can kind of see it through there, the uh, uh, the one that uh, looks like a like a peanut. Um, and that egg, the egg that includes or that is in that, uh, that grew into whatever is in that cell was laid exactly 16 days ago because I saw the queen laying. Um, and that is a queen cell. There's a queen and the queens take 16 days. All these workers take exactly 21 days and uh, male drones take uh, 26 days. So there's a drone cell right there. You can see it kind of, it's, it's bigger. It's so big that it pops out. So these eggs were all laid around the same time and there are lots of workers coming out actually. So I'll get, let's see if I can get, show you some. And the, the, uh, the workers are helping the, the new emerging. Ah, there's one coming out right now. Let me just move these, it's right in there. There's a worker just starting to chew her way out, almost out. And you can see the workers that are already out, they help those new workers get out of their cell. Let's see if I can get her first walk out. I could, I could gently break that wax as well myself and help her out, and I've done that a couple times just for, you know, for, the, for this purpose. And you can see the workers helping uh, her to chew away that wax. They're, they're workers, so they do that. They're working, obviously. Where'd it go? There it is. It's trying hard to get out. I think I'll, I'll come back. Oh, that might be it. That might be it. She's almost got it. There she comes. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> so these bees, as soon as they come out, they, they kind of shake off their slumber and then immediately start doing bee things. It's quite, quite amazing. They have never eaten food through their mouths, so I think uh, once they come out, they kind of have a look around and then they go to try to find some food or else they get fed by the workers. I'm not quite sure how that works. Just zoom in there as good as, I, as well as I can. That's as, bad, as good as I can get right there. All right, and so that's, that. I, I always find that interesting. And new bees are very dusty, powdery colored. Uh, because, you know, you imagine they've been sitting in the uh, cocoon for a long time. Anyways, okay. It's about 30 minutes later. And the edge is really getting thin. Um, it's kind of hard to see. But they've shaved the tip down. I'm hopeful that because they're shaving the tip down, uh, instead of the side, that this there is a queen in there because the queen always comes out of the out of the end, the bottom. So I'll keep another half an hour. All right, so success. There's my new queen. She's dark black. She's carniolan. Those bees are a little bit different from the normal yellow golden uh, Italian strain. They're supposed to winter a little bit better. Um, but they're they're overall just a really really good good bee. So I'll I'll let that be. That queen's been out for probably three four days, and uh, she'll be uh, going on mating flights anytime soon now. So I'll be looking for the presence of eggs probably within you know a couple days, a week, two weeks. It's, it's a beautiful day today, very warm, uh, sunny. So days like this is when the queen wants to go fly, do her first mating flight. Um, and uh, hopefully get impregnated with some drones, from some drones, and come back and start laying. So, so the, the, the queen breeding was a success.